Hey, hey, you're listening to the Journey with Janice podcast. Join me on the journey of pursuing Jesus, building our lives on the word, and seeing this world impacted with the love of God. The Journey with Janice podcast is part of the NRT Podcast Network. You can find my podcast and other great podcasts in the network at newreleasetoday.com. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at the Journey with Janice and check out my website, journeywithjanice.com. Hey, hey, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Journey with Janice podcast. I'm so excited to have my friend Jared on the podcast today. Jared is a fiery man of God who is living life loud for Jesus. He's a husband to his beautiful wife, Lauren, and a daddy to his amazing kiddos, Liam and Wrigley. He's hilarious and always the life of the party and one of those people that you meet and you want to keep in your life. God's doing amazing things in and through his life and ministry, and I'm really excited to have him on the show today. Welcome, Jared. Thank you so much. Excited to be with you. It's been a a long time coming, so I'm happy to be here. <laughs> I know. I've been doing the podcast for almost two years, and Jared's like, why haven't I been on the podcast yet? I'm like, I don't know. You should have been like one of my first guests because you're like seriously one of my favorite people, so I'm excited that it finally worked out for us to do this. Yes. Excited to be here. So we're going to start out like I love doing anytime I have a guest on the show with five fun facts about you so that listeners can just get an idea of who you are. So you ready for that? Yes. <laughs> All right. Number one is what is something on your bucket list? Oh, I got a pretty full list. I think one of them that would be fun and actually tangible to do, you know, really whenever it's just booking the time to do it is white river rafting, I think would be really fun, super dangerous, um, but a lot of fun. That would be super fun, especially if you had like a GoPro camera and make some really good YouTube footage. <laughs> exactly. I would be the one that like flies out of the raft and then I couldn't heave myself <laughs> back up into it. Be a nightmare. So I would walk along the river and take pictures of you guys if you ever want to do that. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. All right. Number two is what is your favorite quote and or scripture? Man, this is a tough one because um, I've really been seeing a lot of scriptures kind of just branch out at me um, where I'm just reading and this one pops up and it's, you know, you read the Bible over and over again and you, something new pops out every single time you read it. Right. Well, that happened to me recently. I actually just preached at my home church and I got to preach out of um, Isaiah and I got to talk about just different aspects in life, but I was Isaiah 40, um, 44 verse three. And it says, for I will pour water on the thirsty land and streams on the dry, on the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon your offspring and my blessing on your descendants. I just right now in my life, I'm, I'm sitting here going, God, I want to be that thirsty person. I want to be the thirsty land. And I want to just I just want you to pour out what you have for me, not tangible blessings, but father, I want the wisdom. I want the peace. I want the favor. I want the grace. And I heard somebody talk about that. And I was able to talk about that a couple of weeks ago at my home church and say, look, the grace that he's willing to pour out only will fall on those who are thirsty. Mm. And I'm like, so I need to, on a daily basis, be thirsty for what he has for me. That is so good. It reminds me of the scripture that says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they'll be filled. And that has been like my prayer too in this season is God, don't let me be filled with the world. I want to be hungry for you, hungry for your word, hungry for what you have for my life, for your presence. And so I love that. I love that scripture. And I love that it's one that I've never heard anyone say before. So that's really, really good. Yeah. So number three is if you could have a coffee date with anyone past or present, who would you choose? Ooh, um, to be really spiritual, um, it would probably be Peter. Um, I want to know what it's like. This is not spiritual at all. I want to know what it's like to walk on water, for one. And so I want to have that conversation. But then I also want to talk to him of what he was feeling 
what he was feeling the night that he denied Jesus three times. Mm. And I would, um, and then I want to know what it felt like when he heard Mary say, well, Jesus told me to come and tell the disciples and Peter. I want to know what he felt like being singled out when Jesus said, go tell the disciples and Peter and hear from his perspective. Cause I could have all kinds of perspectives on that, but I want to hear his perspective. So I think that coffee meeting would turn into it, We'd have to start in the morning cause it'd be all day, all night, you know, all that stuff. <laughs> so many conversations out of that. Oh, that's such a good answer. I thought you'd for sure be like, what did it feel like to lop off that guy's ear in the garden? <laughs> well, that too, you know, I mean, I mean, you know, he had to be like, oh man, that was sick. That was awesome. And then of course, Jesus like heals it back and you're like, well, that was pointless. Gosh, dang it. <laughs> <laughs> I got blood on my sword for nothing. <laughs> I was trying to protect you, Jesus. My goodness. <laughs> oh, that's such a good answer though. That's funny. All right. Number four is what is one place that you haven't been and can't wait to visit? Um, because it's actually a tangible thing that's going to more than likely happen because of my position at Destiny Rescue is visit Nepal. Um, mm-hmm. Be able to go to, to the uh, Himalayas and just see the beauty of God's creation in those mountains is going to be incredible. I love that. I love that so much. I love the season God has you in and just the experiences that you're getting um, because of that with the ministry you work for. That's awesome. Yes. Right. Last, fifth and final fun fact is what is one thing that God is teaching you in this season? Oh, man. Um, I never want to say patience because when you ask for patience, he always gives you more reasons to be patient. <laughs> so, that, but that is, But that is one of them. But another one recently has been I don't know it all and I need to keep digging in the word Mm. um there's times where I'm like I've already read this scripture I've already read this passage I've already you know different things but like I said a few minutes ago I mean every time you read scripture you're going if you're thirsty and you're open to the word of God speaking to you right off that page you will get something new out of it every single time And I've noticed that, and I'm sure you've noticed that in sermon prepping um, of, man, I've never looked at the scripture this way, but it has a lot to do with this subject. And then you come back to it and you're like, well, now it has a lot to do with this subject. And I really believe that's because it's the living word of God. And when you read that and you, you actually get it in your heart, it's God speaking to you right off that page. So, um, so yeah, I mean, obviously patience, but then I don't know it all. And I need to, I need to be willing to continue having a heart to learn more and a mind to learn more of what he has for me in the word of God. Amen. Amen. As I've been, that's one thing that I pray over people uh, before I start communicating the word, because a lot of my ministry is to people who've been Christians probably a lot longer than I have been, but just like, God, let us read your word with a fresh heart. Let us not look at this. Like I've heard this a million times, give us fresh perspective. So I love everything you said there. And that, that could be a sermon in itself. (laughs) So good. So Jared, Jared, tell us your story. Who is Jared? Yeah. So my name is Jared Ballinger. I am, like you said, a few minutes ago, I'm married to the love of my love of my life. My wife, her name is Lauren Ballinger and then two amazing kids, Liam Ballinger and Wrigley Ballinger. And we have an Australian shepherd and we have a poodle and our life is crazy. Um, but I, I grew up a Christian. I grew up um, believing that you have what you say and believing that you can have faith and that faith can, it can be as little as a mustard mountains. And I've held on to that. And I firmly believe that to this day, um, that when you speak to the mountain, it shall move. You have, I believe, in the authority that Jesus has given us. Before he left this earth, he told us that we will have done greater things than he. So I believe as the body of Christ, when we rise up, we can help people find freedom. And that's in so many different aspects. Um, But I just, I've been raised in that. Grew up in church, 
traveled the world, um, not world, traveled the United States and Canada. <laughs> and, uh, and so, um, and just seen thousands of young people give their hearts to Jesus. Janice, we've been able to do ministry in the past together um, and our good friend Anna as well, and been able to see what God has done in the public schools um, across America and seeing kids give their lives to Jesus is just an incredible thing that never gets old. And so being a part of that, I've been a part of multiple different ministries, but in the last um, year I have joined forces with Destiny Rescue, which is an international organization that fights human trafficking. We're in 10 plus countries and um, we got two new pilot countries that we're working in right now and just excited for what God is doing we have two days already rescued over 9,000 individuals since the beginning of Destiny Rescue. And we are already, this year, we're already at over 1,400 um, rescues this year alone. So just seeing God move um, amazingly through these different nations that we're in. And I get to be a part of it. I'm the director of church engagement for Destiny Rescue. So I travel to conferences, churches, men's groups, um, anything that people will have me come in and talk to them about Destiny Rescue and about what God is doing and what God is doing in the church. It's not me that's rescuing. It's not, it's not my boss or whoever I'm working with that's rescuing. It's the body of Christ rising up together and saying, there's something we can do about this. And the church is the one that is rescuing kids all around this world. Because Janice, there is over a million kids living in that nightmare right now. And I believe that right there breaks God's heart. And I think it should break our hearts as well. Mm. I just want to say like right off the bat, I'm just so proud of you and the ministry that you're doing. And I'm also going to put in the website and just your contact information in the show notes, because there are going to be people who listen that maybe are pastors of a church or part of a church body that could bring you in to just share the heart vision of the ministry that you're doing. And I think it's so beautiful what you're doing and it's heartbreaking, but there needs to be just more light shed on what you guys are doing for people to know that the ministry exists and what you guys are doing. So Amen. I, love that. I love that. And you talked about what breaks God's heart. So I want to talk about activating the church's heart for what activates God's heart. I know that's something that you're super passionate about. So this is kind of, a twofold question here. So what do you believe Jared is God's heart eternally? And then his heart for this season specifically that the body of Christ is in. I think eternally, um, obviously the world, um, if, if we look around with our natural eyes right now, the world's, the world's a mess. And eternally his heart is that every peop, every person would call upon his name and would have that chance to call upon his name. And for the world today, I believe, I believe he says, he's saying right now, like, we need to go as the body of Christ. Um, I just talked about this a couple of weeks ago. It's, it's the body of Christ. We get so comfortable sitting where we're at and attending church where we're at and doing what we're doing in our own small community. But the word of God says to go and make disciples go out. So I think for his heart, for us in America and around the world for any person that calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved, but also they're not just saved, but they are now a disciple who needs to make other disciples. They've been rescued so that they can go and rescue. And I believe that's what God's heart is for this day and age, what we're doing now in our lifetime right now. You know, Janice, I, there is a very good chance that we are the generation that will help usher in the Lord. There's a chance for that. And I believe his heart is for us to go make disciples of every living creature. And when every name calls upon the Lord, it says in the end of the times that every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Mm, that is so good. I love everything that you said. And I know like with the ministry that Anna and I did for a few years, like our heart was just to see the body of Christ wake up and get yeah. moving because we all are created. Like the Bible says in Ephesians, we're created with good work. God created us for good works that he prepared in advance for us to do. And there's so many who don't even know the reason they were created. And that literally just 
crushes my heart that there's so many people who don't know what the gifts and talents that God's put on the inside of them. And, and I lived a lot of my life, not knowing either. So no judgment there, but like, I just want to see people activated in their calling and doing what God's called them to do because we all have a purpose. And so, yeah, shaking people awake and get them motivated yes. and moving to make an impact in the world. So I love Absolutely. that. So. That's actually a perfect lead into my next question, which is what are some practical ways that the heart of the church can be activated? Yeah, absolutely. So, so, so often we've heard in the song like Hosanna by Hillsong Worship, where it says like, in the end of the song, it says, break our hearts for what breaks yours. So often as the body of Christ, we ask God to break our hearts, right? And we say, God, break our hearts for what breaks yours. But you know what, Janice, we then, when we do that, we ask that question, we say, God, please break our hearts for what breaks yours. And then we get offended when our hearts are broken. And, and then we get mad at God and we say, God, why is this breaking my heart? Like, why is this happening? Why is it now we're mad at God for the very thing that we asked for. And as the body of Christ, I believe, no, we need to take that broken heart and say, we got to do something about this. That's why when I go to churches, I say, we believe that when the church rises up, when they back this organization or they, they walk with us and they become advocates of destiny rescue, we believe that kids that are right now living in a hellish nightmare are going to find freedom because the church rises up. When the church rises up, people find freedom. That's not only in in the case for Destiny Rescue, but that's in the case of addiction. That's in the case of marital issues. That's in the case of all those different situations that when the church, when the body of Christ rises up, when the church rises up, people find freedom. But so often in the church, we're scared to rise up because we don't want our hearts to be broken. We want to think that everything is okay in our small communities. And we want to move forward just as life has been and it, be like the 1950s with all of our smiles on our faces and everybody's waving at each other and smiling at each other. And that's just not life in 2022. 2022 has shown us now it's time for the body of Christ to say, look, this world is empty. This world needs Jesus. And if we don't do something, there's a possibility that nobody ever will. And it's time that we are the ones that rise up we are the ones that, that, that take a stand and that move forward and say, we're going to take the mission of God. We're going to take the heart of God, what activates his. Because I believe one thing that breaks God, that breaks God's heart, that should break ours, is that there is over a million children living in human trafficking. And that every single night, these children are going to bed to work and not to sleep. That should break our hearts. But yet we live in these communities where like, well, that doesn't happen. That doesn't happen here, so it can't happen over there. Well, let me tell you, it's happening everywhere. And that should break our hearts because it breaks God's heart. I would do whatever it takes if my own children were living in that nightmare. I would do whatever it takes to get my children back. So why wouldn't we as the body of Christ do whatever it takes when that's God's children out there? So I believe that it's just time to, it's time to say, you know, I'm taking a stand. I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to let this happen anymore to my generation. Amen. I, I literally love everything you said. And one thing that I'm just hearing as you're, as you're talking and sharing your heart is the passion that is within you as you share what you're sharing. And I think that's mm-hmm. something too, that the body of Christ needs. We need to get passionate about the things that God's passionate about and get out there and, and do the things that we're called to do. That is that is so good. And even as you were talking, I was thinking about just randomly about the the scene in the Wizard of Oz where he's like, pay no attention to that man behind the curtain and, and mm-hmm. how often we allow the enemy to just stay in hidden places and, and move in deception and, and distraction has just been something that I've been praying a lot against in this season because there's such an assignment to distract us from what's really happening and what God really wants to do in and through our lives and just to have our eyes completely awake. The Bible talks about staying vigilant, sober-minded, alert, because he does prowl around like a roaring lion seeking whom he Mm. may devour. And I don't want to be devoured. I don't want to see those around me devoured. I want to stay awake and alert and stop being so defensive against the enemy. That's something 
God really worked in my heart the last couple of years is, Hey, stop being on the defensive with the enemy and letting him wreck havoc and then clean up his messes. Like, no, you be on the offensive, you go plunder enemy camp and you go and, you know, rescue people. And so that's literally what you're doing. And uh, I just, I got fired up. I'm like, listen, we're going to preach to the world. This is so good. <laughs> no. And I love that because, because I was, um, a couple of weeks ago, I was talking about this and I said, you know, look, we already, I don't know if anybody remembers the psalm back in the day, and it talks about, I went to the enemy's camp, and I took back what he stole from me. We have, we have literally let the enemy walk into our camp and take away, as, as the body of Christ, in the last two years since the world, two and a half years, since the world decided to shut down a little bit and everything, we, we have let the enemy walk in and steal our joy, our peace our favor, our wisdom, our strength, everything about that, we have let the enemy come in, walk right in and steal right away from us. And it's like, no, we're, we're the body of Christ. We have the authority to, to not allow that to happen. When we speak just the name of Jesus, the enemy has to flee. So now it's been a point in my life to say, in the name of Jesus, I have favor. I have wisdom. I have peace. I have understanding. I have strength because I'm going to speak that over my life. And I'm going to let the enemy know that I'm speaking the name of Jesus through all of that. And that means the enemy is not allowed to mess with me when I am continuously speaking the name of Jesus, because it literally says the enemy must flee when we say his name. Amen. Amen. And that's like one thing I've, I've preached on a lot too, is just like, what is our portion as believers? And there's so many times, like we think, you know, we say the sinner's prayer, we get saved and then praise God, we live our lives. And when we die, we'll go to heaven kind of thing. But there's so much that God has for us on this side of eternity that we're really living beneath all that he has for us a lot of times. And so that's been like my prayer, like, God, I want to know everything you have for me. What is my portion? The Bible says, forget not all his benefits. I'm like, okay, what are my benefits? God, show me so that I can live that out now and live that abundant life that you've, you died to give me. And so I love yeah. everything you said. And just even earlier when you were talking about just the power of our words and what is our, what is our confession? we know out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. So I always tell people, if you want a really good gauge on your heart, pay attention to what's coming out of your mouth. Are you speaking faith or are you speaking doubt are you speaking fear and so allowing god to to change our hearts continually keeping that like access open to him like god purify my heart so that i'm living the life you died to give me and so so many good things so many good things is what you said so we talk um i want to talk about some things that pollute the heart of the church that we can be on guard against i know i hit a little bit on just like distraction and deception but is there anything else you can think of that pollutes the heart of the church that we should be on guard against uh, strife. Um, I believe there's so much strife in the church today um, with what's going in our go, what's going on our on in our world. We are seeing a lot of strife of this is what we this is the way we need to go. No, this is the way we need to go. And oh, we need to accept this now because this is what's happening in the world. And then we don't need to accept this. And it's become this conservative versus liberal world. And we've let strife and politics completely consume the church and it's completely separating the body of Christ. The scariest thing about COVID-19 wasn't the virus. It was the separation it had caused in the body of Christ. That was the scariest thing about COVID was the separation. We let these things get into our minds and then we feel automatically that we have to debate, debate, debate debate because it's got to be our way and i think we've lost sight of why don't we just let it be god's way and we be the hands and feet and do what he needs us to do so i really believe strife and in the po politics has really corrupted um the church in the last few years mm, that's such a good answer that spirit of division that's just weaseled its way in and we've let it and 
really a lot of believers are operating with it, maybe don't even realize it. And I was just yeah. reading Philippians not that long ago, and it amazes me. I encourage people go read that, <laughs> go read that book if you haven't read it in a while, or if you've never read it, go read it. But it talks over and over and over again in the book of Philippians about unity and the body of Christ and how. Mm-hmm how much we need that. And I just think how much we argue over things that don't matter, that have no eternal significance. And it's just, just a form of distraction to keep us, keep our eyes off the enemy. So mm, that's a good answer. So with all that said, we, we do talk a lot of, a lot of times we talk about ways the church is getting it wrong, but what do you think are some ways that the church is getting it right? Yeah. Um, I think that there is a fine line of accepting in loving with truth. Um, and I think the church is doing pretty good at the loving with truth in some aspects um, with, look, I want everybody to come to church. I don't care how you live. But at the same time, I'm going to have to love you with the truth of God's word as well. Um, I'm always going to firmly believe what the word of God says but I'm going to love you with this word. I'm not going to condemn you. And I really feel like the church is doing really good. I just got out of a lunch meeting and we were talking about some churches in the area that are just doing really well at, no, it doesn't matter how they live their life because we believe here at the church, if we can love them well and we can show them the grace of God, but we can also speak truth into their life, they will eventually change. So I think the church, yeah, I think they're just doing really good at, I think we're doing, I'm part of the church too. I think we're doing a really good job with loving with truth. I agree. That's such a good answer. And and like I've said a million times, like love rejoices in the truth. That's what the word says in Corinthians, first Corinthians 13, that love rejoices in the truth. And so you can have both. And so many times we falter to one side or the other where it's all love and no truth or all truth and no love. And we have to have that balance. So, and I love that. And God is the only one that can change a human heart. So yes, that's, that pressure shouldn't be on us. Obviously we share the truth and love, but God's the only one that can really change a person. He's the only one that could change me or you. And so I love that. All right. This has been such an amazing conversation. So Jared, do you have any other encouragement for the podcast community? Anything else on your heart that you want to share? Yeah, I want to just let the listeners know right now where you're sitting, where you're driving, whatever you're doing, listening to this podcast, that you are seen, you are loved, and you are cared for, and there's nothing that you could ever do that would ever separate you from the love of Jesus. He loves you, he wants you, and we want you. We want you to be a part of this family, so just know that all you have to do is call upon the name of the Lord and know that you've been rescued to rescue. And I'm not talking about just human trafficking. I'm also talking about the ones that are living in addiction, living in marital issues, living with no hope. You are there to rescue them. Just like you've been rescued by somebody that was being used of God, let God use you to go and rescue somebody else. Amen. 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 I love all of that. So Jared, how can listeners stay connected with you? Could you let them know about your website, your social media handles and all of that? And then would you close out this journey with Janice podcast with prayer? Yes. Um, so you can find me on um, Instagram at it's just at. And then also my email is Jared dot Ballinger at destiny org. Would love to have conversations about how your church can be one of those churches that helps rise up and helps free children. So would love to talk to you on there. Um, follow me on Instagram. I mostly just post the stories because um, if I posted pictures every day, it would only be of my children. And I think people get sick and tired of seeing children all the time. So uh, um, so I post about them a lot. Um, but yeah, follow me on there. And I am on Facebook, Jared Ballinger on Facebook. And then um, destinyrescue.org for any more information on Destiny Rescue. Tons of videos, tons of uh, blog posts and updates too. They're always sharing updates of how many kids were rescued in each country that we're in and um, cool stuff like that. So yeah, hit me up online. 
Awesome. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to be on here. This was such a fun and encouraging conversation. I was encouraged just listening to what God had to say through you. So thanks for taking the time to come on here. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. All right. I'll let you go ahead and pray and we're going to close this thing out. All right. Good deal. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we're so grateful for your love, your kindness, your mercy, and your grace. We're so thankful that there's nothing we could ever do that would ever separate your love from us. We love you, Lord. We honor, we're honored that we get to call you our Father. We need you. We need more of you. And Father, help us to continue to be thirsty for you so that you can pour your grace out on us. Father, we need to be thirsty. And so we're, we're thankful that we're continuously thirsty for more of you. We need you, Jesus. We have you, Jesus. And we're so grateful for that. And Father, for the ones that are listening right now, Father, that you would guide their hearts to bow to their knees and to worship you and to speak your name and your name alone. And Father, equip them to go out and preach the gospel and make disciples of every living creature. In the mighty, precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.